back, let's finish this 2019 paper 2, it's calculator paper. Right, number 12. Uh, here's a sector of a circle and a smaller sector of a circle. The sectors are similar. Okay, so this is a similar figures, uh, similar shapes question. The area of the large one is 2750, right? So that's the area of this one. 2750. That's the area. The question is, find the area of the smaller one. Right, okay, when I'm doing these similar shapes, I always um, work out my scale factor first. And it's a linear scale factor that we're working out. And that's basically, in terms of the length, how much bigger or smaller is one compared to the other. Um, I always do the scale factor being the new one divided by the old. Okay, it doesn't matter if you write this down or not, as long as you do the right correct sums, okay? The new one is the one that I'm working out. So I'll call that the new one and I'll call that old one, since we know the information from the old one. Uh, so it's the measurements that match up. So it's the 30, oops, the 30 and the 50 that I'm using, okay? So it's 30 divided by 50. On your calculator, 0 0.6. So that's telling us that in terms of length, um, the wee one is actually 0 0.6 times the size of the bigger one, okay? Now, it's a area, scale factor area question. Uh, you don't need to write round down the area scale factor. You can go straight on to work out the area of the small one, if, um, as long as you show you're working. Um, there's something we need to do with this scale factor first before we simply multiply it by 2750. We actually need to square it, okay? Um, and as I said, you can do this in the one... Okay, um, so that means that the small area is actually 0 0.36 times the size of the large one. Oops. 990. 990, see if it makes sense. Yep, yeah, it's smaller. Um, it looks probably less than half the times the size and compared to the big one, it makes sense. Uh, squared centimetres, or whatever one you, you want to write it, it makes sense to write it like that, 990. Right, part B, there is a part B to this. Calculate the size of angle AB, ACB. Right, where is angle ACB? ACB, oh right, okay. I'm going to sketch that wee shape out. Um, angle ACB is the the first sector and the radius was 50. It's that one there, angle ACB. Find the size of angle ACB. Uh, we do know the area is 2750. Okay, ACB, the radius is 50, the area is 2750. I'm just going to write beside it so we know that number. So the question is, Find the angle, okay? Uh, we know the area of the sector. This is a sector area question, okay? We know the area of the sector. Uh, I'm going to move this up a wee bit, give myself a wee bit more space. Right, area of a sector formula is the angle over 360 times by area of a sector, area of a circle, pi r squared, okay? And we know the answer to this area formula, it's 2750, because the formula works out the area of the circle. Now we're going to put in the numbers that we know, we don't know the angle, so I'm just going to call it angle x. x over 360 times pi, we know the radius, the radius squared is 50 squared, gives us 2750. Okay, um, it doesn't matter which method you use to do this, you can, some people do it slightly different. I'm going to get rid of the 360. That 360 here is dividing. So how do I reverse it or get rid of it? I multiply by 360 on the opposite side. Which is 9900000. Yes. Uh, that's what um, we get when we multiply by the 360. Now I'm going to get rid of the 50 squared. Okay. How do we get rid of 50 squared? What's the 50 squared doing? It's multiplying on the left-hand side. So to get rid of it, I'm going to do a division. 
by 50 squared. You can work out 50 squared first if you want. So I'm going to divide that number by what 50 squared does. And I get 396. Okay, now remember that's what x times pi is equal to, 396. How, how do I find out what x is equal to? Well, I do 396 divided by pi. 126, we'll see, degrees. Okay, the number after the 6 is a point zero, so I'll leave it like that. Does it make sense? Yes, it's an angle, 126. My sketch doesn't, maybe doesn't look like 126, but looking at the original one, yeah, it looks about 126. It's fine. Right, number 13. Find an expression for the gradient of the line joining point A is 6, 9, and point B is 4p, 4p squared. So we have to find the gradient. How do we find the gradient? There's a gradient formula. To find the gradient, it's y2 minus y1. Remember, this is not given in the exam. It's not in the formula list. Uh, when you're using this formula, please make sure you label the points. So this could be point 1. I'll call it x1 and y1. And I'll call this one x2 and y2. And now we're going to sub them in in the correct place in the formula. So y2, so it's 4p squared minus 9. At the bottom, 4p minus 6. Now, the question says, uh, give your answer in its simpl uh, simplest form. This is not the simplest form of this. It's something we can do. This is an algebraic fraction. To simplify an algebraic fraction, we factorise. That's the method. I do not want to see people scoring out p at the top, p at the bottom. We factorise to simplify. Right, uh, bottom one. The, the wee bit in the bottom here is so much easier to simplify. Take out the common factor. Common factor is 2. 2p minus 3. Now, what should happen in this question, remember, to simplify an algebraic fraction, you should have a term at the top that cancels out completely with a term at the bottom. So chances are either the top's going to have the 2 or it's going to have a 2p minus 3 in it. Now look at the top, 4p squared minus 9. That is a difference of two squares. It's not a common factor, there's no common factor, and it's not a trinomial as it doesn't have the three terms. So it's a difference of two squares. 2p times 2p is 4p squared, and 3 times 3 is 9. One's a plus, one's a minus. And now you can see the term that's going to multiply, uh, sorry, cancel out here are the 2p minus 3s. And what we're left with is... That's the answer. Number 14. Solve the equation. So this is a trig equation. Uh, to solve a, a trig equation, first of all, try and get cos on its own. What do we move first? We move the plus 2 onto the right hand side. 1 take away 2 is minus 1. Uh, now we don't want the 5 there. How do we get rid of the 5? What's the 5 doing? It's multiplying by cos, so what do we do on the right hand side? We divide by cos. So that is really 1 divided by 5 is 0.2, so negative 1 divided by 5 is negative 0.2. Now, to find x, remember, oops, it's messy, uh, to find x, we do the inverse cos, and I'm hoping you remember what you've not to key in here. We do inverse cos of 0.2, not the negative part. We ignore the negative. Inverse cos, shift cos, inverse cos, gives us approximately 78. It's not mentioned anything about rounding. We'll say 78.5. Okay. Now this is where all trick equations have two solutions. Okay, there's always two. One generally comes from the calculator. Uh, to get your two solutions, this is the way I do it. You may do it slightly different. Uh, go back to cos equals. So we're going back to this line. Cos equals. This is where it comes in. Okay. Cos equals, and is it positive or negative? It was actually negative one fifth or negative 0 0.2. So cos is negative. So which two quadrants is cos negative? They're all positive in the first. 
So cos is not negative in the first. It's definitely not that one. Cos at the end, cos is positive in the fourth, so it's not that one either. So it's actually the second and the third quadrants that we're looking for. So the calculated answer, the 78.5, that was the first quadrant answer. That's not one of our solutions. We are looking for the second. So we do 180 minus 78.5. And how do we get the third? We do 180 plus the 78.5. Okay. 101.5 is our second quadrant answer. And our third quadrant answer, 258.5. Number 15. Write this as a single fraction. Right, OK. A uh, single fraction, to, this is an addition. To add or subtract, you must have a common denominator. The common denominator must include both existing denominators. If the 4 and the 3 were at the bottom here, you would do a common denominator as 12, because 4 times 3 is 12. So, basically, you multiply the both existing denominators. So, the first one is going to be x minus 2 times x plus 5. x minus 2 times x plus 5. Now, obviously, we've changed the bottoms of the fractions. It means we need to also change the top of the fractions. Okay? The first fraction just had an x minus 2 at the bottom. It's now been multiplied at the bottom by x plus 5. So the top of this fraction also gets multiplied by x plus 5. Uh, the second fraction just had an x plus 5 at the bottom, but the bottom's been multiplied by x minus 2, so the top has to be multiplied by x minus 2 as well. And now that we've got both terms, uh, sorry, the common denominator, we can now write this over the one single fraction. Multiply out the brackets, okay? In fact, I won't multiply out the brackets yet. I'm just going to write this out first. And then I'm, I'll multiply out the brackets. That's what I would normally do. Right, so... The bottom term does never have to be... It doesn't have to be multiplied out, okay? 4x plus 20... Oops. Take away... Right, let's think this is a negative 3 times x, negative 3x, negative 3 times negative 2, plus 6. Okay, collect any terms together, 4x minus 3x, we've just got 1x at the top, plus 20 plus 6, plus 26. And as I said, you don't have to multiply out the bottom, that's fine. Okay. Uh, number 16, simplify. Right, okay, this is an indices type question. Right, uh, it doesn't matter which bit you do first, I'll just multiply over the top. Uh, the top, when you multiply, remember that's an e to the power 1. When you multiply, you add the indices. So it's 3a to the power 5. Now, something we need to do with the bottom. There's another way we can write the bottom power. Uh, there's not a power given, but see the square root of a? It is just a to the power a half. That's what a to the power, uh, sorry, the, the square root of a is. It's a to the power a half. Uh, however, there's a final answer we can do here. When we're doing a division by indices, division, we subtract the powers. So it's 3a to the power, was 5 take away a half. We can write 4 and a half or 4.5 or write it as 9 over 2, it doesn't matter which way you write it. It's absolutely fine. Okay. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Number 17. Expand and simplify and show you're working. Right, okay. Uh, so, it says sine x plus cos x, and it says squared, right? This here says squared. What does squared mean? It means that we're multiplying by another sine x plus cos x. Squared means you times it by itself. So let's multiply this out, see what happens. Sine times sine, 
sine x times sine x is our sine squared. Sine x times cos x is just uh, sine x cos x. Uh, there's another cos x sine x, sine x cos x, cos x sine x, they're both the same thing, okay, plus cos squared x, cos times cos is cos squared, okay, uh, next, sine squared plus cos squared, this comes from one of your trig identities, Okay, there's two trig identities you need to know. Uh, why did I write that? I'll just write trig identity. The trig identity we're thinking of here is sine squared plus cos squared is equal to 1. Okay, the other tri uh, trig identity I was thinking of was uh, tan is sine divided by cos. So sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Plus, and these two here I mentioned already, Sine cos or cos sine, they are both identical, okay? <clears throat> They're not cancelling out, it's not one uh, subtract the other. You just get two of the same terms. So we'll say plus 2 sine x cos x. It's like plus x plus x, you've actually got two of them, okay? And that's it finished. <clears throat> Number 18. Uh, this snowman question, I think, pretty sure it caused a lot of problems in the exam paper when it came up. Um, read the information below, because none of the numbers are given in the picture, okay? So there's two circles, a small circle and a big circle. It tells you the diameter of the small circle there. Uh, that's the only number it's given you. It tells you the centre is the, the big circle, is the letter T. Uh, so, this whether you believe it, it's a Pythagoras question. And I'm going to highlight a wee part here. Uh, the qu what we have to work out is the height of the snowman. So it's find that distance. OK, we actually already know this distance here. Right, the small circle, diameter 15. Now, so we already know that, C down to T. Um, the diameter of the small circle is 15. So all we need to find out is this bit here. Basically, there to there, which is the radius of the big circle. Okay, we just need to find the radius of the big circle. Right, so if we can find the radius of the big circle, we can just add it to the 15, and then we've got the height of the full snowman. So, the radius of the big circle, now remember, no matter where you draw the radius, it's the radius, there's a centre there. I'm going to draw, the ra that's also the radius, okay? Now I'm going to take out that wee centre triangle. See in the middle you've got S, T and B. This is the radius, I don't know what it is, like that's the radius from T to B. I do know the small circle has a diameter 15. Okay, full the way across the circle. That means that's a 7.5 then. 7.5. Right, that's 7.5 and that's 7.5. Okay, because the full diameter is 15 after. Right, uh, let's go back to this question. Right, how do I find x squared would be equal to 7.5 squared plus 7.5 squared? Let's see. Oops. Help with the calculator on. Oops. A hundred and twelve point five. Uh, that's what x is. Remember, you need to get x. Uh, that's what x squared is equal to. Take the square root. Oops. Ten point six. Does it mention it about rounding? It doesn't. So we'll say ten point six. Uh, so. The wee bit at the bottom, from T down to D, the radius of the circle is 10.6. So the height of the snowman, therefore, as I mentioned at the very beginning, it's the 15, the height of the wee circle at the top, the total uh, diameter, add on the radius of the bottom one, which is 10.6. Total, approximately, we'll say 25.6. And we should give in the units. Uh, I'm pretty sure these are centimetres, yes. And it doesn't mention anything about rounding, so that will do. I'm pretty sure that's as finished. Yes. Right, best of luck.